Hello, this is an epic production. I'm Rocket Race, and today we're going to be running through some of the most powerful items in the Bionicle universe. If you don't have a familiarity with Bionicle, feel free to listen in. We'll be doing our best to explain the abilities of these objects, as well as how they can be best exploited. Role players, feel free to take notes. Number one. One of the most overpowered things Bionicle fans think of are the three legendary masks. Those, however, despite their plot significance, are not the most powerful things in the setting. The Mask of Time, the first mask shown, is, well, it's not very useful. It can speed up or slow down time in a limited area, and if you lose control of the mask, or destroy the mask, time itself unravels. However, even that cannot be utilized very effectively as a stratagem of any sort, as, well, that effect is confined to the Matoran universe, which means it's not that useful. Really, Voparak, the guy who actually has the job of hunting it down, is more dangerous than the actual mask, as he rapidly ages everything around him, such as no one can attack him without turning to dust. The second mask, the Mask of Life, is useful. It has a broad and powerful array of effects. However, the mask itself is not durable enough to withstand wear and tear, being shown to disintegrate into air and slightly tainted water, and, well, if you do manage to use it and avoid the curses that are inflicted simply by touching it, you will be subsumed into the life force which the mask uses to accomplish its effects. The mask of creation is admittedly useful on paper, however, its power is never really explored in canon, and the Gen 2 stories that include it are, well, poorly written and very lacking in lore. Number two, we have the Olmac Mask of Dimensional Gates. This Kanohi mask, when worn, can open a portal to anywhere. These are, in canon, often used for dimensional travel, and in one instance, to drop a Todrak, a giant lizard monster, into the sprawling metropolis of Metru Nui. It is, however, still hilariously underused, both for simple travel and for the many combat uses, from snapping a portal closed to bisect an enemy to raining streams of lava on them from above. Depending on how large the portals can be, this mask may have been capable of dropping entire islands on one another. A shame this mask wasn't used to its full potential. Number three. Simply put, everything even tangentially related to Kanoka discs. Kanoka are discs of metal that carry certain powers, which allows for incredibly useful items and technology with even a little thought. Regeneration Kanoka can be built into anything. Put a layer under, say, protosteel armor, and as soon as that armor is impacted, be it by a projectile, a weapon, or something else, it will be infused with regenerative power and immediately repair whatever damage it was about to take. Regeneration Kanoka can also be built into guns with a little clever thought, allowing for infinite ammo. Reconstitutes at random Kanoka in particular are an egregious instance of ridiculousness. These Kanoka randomize your form completely, and in all likelihood, you would be reconstituted into a form that is not biologically viable and thereby die. There's also the fact that any Kanohi power with a few rare exceptions can be replicated as a Kanoka power, which, well, it allows for a lot of abilities. But that's not all. Not only are the powers of the Kanoka themselves useful, but something else. Kanoka in built that are built in certain metrus have certain abilities. Ka metru discs, for instance, can be controlled by the thrower's thoughts. As this is not due to the location they are made, but rather the way they are forged by those crafters, this could, in theory, be applied to armor or vehicles just as easily. 
Imagine a ship whose hull deflects all projectiles, or an armor that allows the user to fly. The possibilities are limitless. Why this is barely explored in canon could be explained by the fact that Metro Nui was taken out of the picture by Makuta, but this theory stops holding water when you realize that the city has already been around for a thousand or so years. Number four, we have Toa of Iron. These Toa have the ability to create, control, and absorb all metals, not just iron. This, well, in a world where every species, and I do mean every species except for the resident Lovecraftian horror, is a cyborg, it's pretty insane. With a wave of their hand, they can destroy any opponent that they have, including a Makuda, which we'll get into the Makuda later. But, simply put, they are insanely powerful in this world. This is, of course, why they were hunted down and killed in canon, with very rare exceptions. Number five, we have the Kanohi Stanok, Mask of Accuracy. Simply put, this mask allows you to always hit your target, to the point where the canonical user simply dropped a boulder and had it bounce and ricochet five times in order to hit his opponent in the back without being noticed. This, well, I don't think I need to specify how well that could be abused. Number six, telekinesis. Really, it goes without saying that telekinesis is a fairly strong power, but since in this world it is specifically and explicitly capable of affecting people directly, I feel that this needs to be mentioned. This power, with even a little thought, can be used to insane ends. You can shatter someone's neck with a thought. You can crush their heart. Whatever. You can attack any part of them as long as you can so much as think of it, and that is a very, very versatile power. In addition, the Kanohi Matatu, which is the mask of telekinesis in this world, allows for exceptionally strong telekinesis and long-ranged effects as well, being capable of shattering stone walls with a thought, as well as throwing a person up a skyscraper. That brings us to number seven, the Mask of Mutation. This mask, quite simply, allows the user to forcibly shapeshift anyone in the site, whether they want to be shapeshifted or not. The effects are permanent, and really, unless you're on the side of the mask user, this is a very dangerous proposition as they can, simply by willing it, turn you into a beetle, or remove your limbs, or any of thousand worse scenarios. If you are on the side of the mask user, however, you should rejoice, because they can grant you any number of powers, from teleportation to fire breath to flight. Of course, for some reason, this mask power is not considered immoral. Why, you ask? Because the Makuta who used it did not rebel. That's why most masks are considered immoral, by the way. Because the evil Makuta used them. A bit of an odd benchmark, don't you think? And that does bring us to number eight, the Makuta. They have a total of 46 powers, more if you count their Kanohi, and in that mix of powers are things such as limited invulnerability, a power whose only actual limitation is that it doesn't apply to light, and molecular disruption, a power which can disintegrate things on the molecular level. On top of that, all this, they don't have a normal body. They consist of a gas that doesn't need sustenance, disperses incredibly slowly, even in open air, such that they can survive for two weeks without a body, a trivial matter with their ability to teleport, 
and they can possess spiritless bodies such as robots or their proto-steel armor, essentially the adamantium of the Bionicle universe. Sure, the Makuta did lose the fight for Kod and Nui, but that's not much of a factor when you consider half the Makuta were blind, the other half were mutated such that they lost half of their powers, and the whole group was still letting the Toa win. Number five brings us to a point that I'd like to make in Bionicle, the mooks are never weak. They simply suffer from conservation of ninjutsu. The Bograk in particular are an example of this. They're blue robotic water spiders. Pretty simple, right? Wrong. They also shoot spinning energy blasts that bloat underwater targets and make them float to the surface. What do they do if they aren't underwater, they ask? Oh, nothing much. They just dehydrate you to the point you crumble to dust. As if that wasn't enough, they can also petrify or sublimate their opponents with a sonic hum. And yet, of course, due to conservation of ninjutsu, they are somehow defeated by six Toa Hodaika. Toa who have no mass powers and can only throw spinners of their elements. Number 10, the top of the list, my personal favorite, the Mask of Conjuring. This mask, well, it's fairly ridiculous. This mask allows the user to give themselves any power they choose. There is only one catch. You have to state a weakness. Think about that for a moment. A being can give themselves the powers of the legendary Mask of Life, or indeed even all three legendary masks, and have the weakness be something meaningless, such as the power will not function if they come in contact with those legendary masks. From what data we have on these Kanohi, that would be a valid power. If you happen to lead any sort of roleplay or game involving the Kanohi of Bionicle, I would recommend banning this Kanohi. Well, that wraps up our list. If you enjoyed, please stick around. I'm sure we'll be making a few more videos of this type soon enough. But for now, this has been Rocket Racer with Epic Productions, signing off.